the epistle appointed to be read for this, the Easter Sunday, the Feast of Easter, is taken from the first epistle of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brethren, purge out the old leaven that you may be a new dough, as you really are without leaven. For Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Therefore, let us keep festival not with the old leaven, nor with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. And the Holy Gospel is taken from St. Mark. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. At that time, Mary Magdalene, Mary, the mother of James and Salome, bought spices that they might go and anoint Jesus. And very early on the first day of the week, they came to the tomb when the sun had just risen. And they were saying to one another, who will roll the stone back from the entrance of the tomb for us? And looking up, they saw that the stone had been rolled back, for it was very large. But on entering the tomb, they saw a young man sitting at the right side, clothed in a white robe, and they were amazed. He said to them, do not be terrified. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He is not here. Uh, he is risen. He is not here. Behold the place where they laid him. But go tell his disciples and Peter that he goes before you into Galilee. There you shall see him as he told you. Thus for this Sunday's Holy Gospel. My beloved people, as all of you know, today, by the grace of God, three of our monks will be traveling to get two of them ordained to the holy priesthood. And they will be setting out to travel after dinner today. There will also be others of us, some of us, who will also will be traveling in the same direction they too will be leaving after dinner today, traveling to go to Connecticut. I want us to kneel, and I want us to say prayers for these, our monks and these, our holy people. Not that you're not holy, because you're not going up there. All of you are holy. But that these particular people are go going to the inconvenience of going up there to witness this very holy occasion. Would you please kneel? In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost, Amen. Glory be to our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. May Almighty God bless us who are going on this on this journey. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. While we're kneeling, I ask you also to pray for our Father Bernard and our Father Joseph, that they will indeed be holy men, holy priests of God, who will promote the love of God, and not as a holy priests, but not as holy men who are involved in things that don't pertain to God at all 
But let these men be men of God, completely, totally, absolutely devoted only to the love of God. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. St. Bernard, pray for us. St. Joseph, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. This morning, due to all that uh, is scheduled for the day, I will not be coming outside to visit with you after Mass. Um, it goes without saying that everyone here, the monks, the sisters, every one of us, extend to you the felicitations and the blessedness and the beauties of this day. Uh, you will excuse me if um, I appear to be nervous because I am nervous. Therefore, my beloved people, as we proceed with the grace of God, it is no small thing what we're doing. And it is all for the love of God. We see the risen, risen Christ as I'm pointing to him. He is God. And the only thing that he stands for is love. When he was the Christ on earth, He had to deal with those who knew the letter of the law. They knew every point of the law. They had it memorized. They were the interpreters of the, of the law. They knew the thousand, thousand rules and sets of rules that applied to every letter of the law. They knew all there was to be known They knew about the Messiah. They could have probably painted a picture of him with utter perfection. They had such a clear-cut description of the Messiah. There was no doubt in the mind who he was and who he was to be. And yet, he talked to them. He ate with them. He rubbed shoulders with them. He was amongst them. But they didn't see him. And what he had to say, as simple and as clear-cut as it was, and he talked to them about it, they didn't hear him. It is only in love. I'm not speaking here, do, do not, do not uh, misunderstand me when I use the word love. It is not something of an emotion. The love is charity. They had, the, if they had the, the tongues of men and angels, 
They knew prophecy. They had all knowledge. They had faith, even, probably, strong enough to move mountains. But they did not know God. And that is what we must today work to do, is to come to know God. Nothing else matters. If we do not know that, then all that this one here has done would have been for nothing. You will recall that as Christ hanging on the cross, He said, God, Father rather, he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. When the good thief on the cross said what he said, he said, Today thou wilt be with me. When he came back, the story was slightly different. He didn't go back and present himself to all of those who drove the nails through his hand, who, who, who did all of the shenanigans and the dirtiness that was involved. Did he go to them and say, I told you, here I am. He did not go to them and he left them in the darkness that was to follow them all the days of their lives. My beloved people, it is with the grace of God that you believe. And God is the foundation of Christianity. Love of God is the foundation of the sanctification of our souls. Nothing else matters Nothing else matters. And yet today, we involve ourselves in so much of that nothing else. And we wonder perhaps why we may be in darkness. The darkness, my beloved people, does not, does not begin with the sun going down over the horizon. The darkness begins within me. I am the one who is dark. I am the one whose mind is closed. And even God cannot penetrate a closed mind. My beloved people, it is all in love. I will not talk anymore this morning because it's sim we simply have to go. And that's why I said a moment ago, these two men, please God, with the grace of God, will come back priests of God, men devoted, actively committed, totally committed to their calling, to their vocation, to their God. Pray for them. And pray for all those good priests, and there are many good priests today. Pray for them, because the enemy is against them, against those who want to preach what the risen Christ is telling us. Last Friday, we had the beautiful ceremonies they were not what they should have been because we don't have the manpower to do these ceremonies with, but they were beautiful. And I'm sure that when those of you that came walked away, you had the love of God in your hearts and you saw, you saw the tragedy that took place. Now we have the glory and the triumph of the resurrection. And may Christ resurrect himself in our hearts, every one of us. 
And may we be given the grace to hear what he has to say. May we be given the grace to see him. That's the important thing, that we be given the grace to see. That's the whole thing. Lord, that I may see. I do believe, O oh God. Help me in my unbelief. And now I will give you all the Easter blessing. And my hope and prayer is that Almighty God, Christ, the risen Savior, the Redeemer, will enter into our hearts. And if anyone be of a stony heart, may that heart be softened to let him in. My beloved people, please kneel.